Hello everyone, welcome to Barcelona News. It is April 29th, 2023, and it's reported that Barcelona are feeling positive in regards to the viability plan and the chances of signing Lionel Messi. Also, the club have officially began talks with Osman Dembele's agent Moussa Sissoko for the renewal of the French attacker. And finally, it's reported that Barcelona are not quite sure whether to go all out for the Brazilian Vitor Roque. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mo, and before we begin with the news, I would just like to apologize for not doing the post-match live stream analysis today and for bringing you this video late at night. Unfortunately, I got sick, so I was in bed all day trying to feel better. But thankfully, I am feeling much better now and ready to bring you all of Barcelona's news for today. Now, having said that, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long, long way in helping this small and humble channel continue to grow. Now, I'll begin with the news that Barcelona defeated Real Betis 4-0 today at the Spotify Camp Now, maintaining their lead at the top of La Liga table, 11 points ahead of Real Madrid, after Real Madrid won their respective match 4-2 against Almeria, two hours before the start of Barcelona's match. Now Barcelona returned to top form with a great display against Real Betis and where we saw the return of Andreas Christensen from injury. And I think we definitely noticed how much we were missing Christensen in the center back position because our defense were on top of their game with that amazing duel between Andreas Christensen and Ronald Araujo. And also what a return it was for Christensen as he did score Barcelona's first goal with a great header as a result from a great cross from Rafinha. Now Barcelona were able to dominate the match thanks to the return of their four starting midfields with Busquets, Gabi, Pedri, and Frankie de Jong. And where Barcelona were able to take control of the midfield, they were able to stop the advances of Real Betis more importantly, they were able to move the ball around quickly and distribute the ball, which allowed the team to create many of chances which culminated in Barcelona's four goals. Now, I think one of the main reasons why we saw that Barcelona's attack work much better than previous matches is because for the first time in a long time, we saw the players moving around and try to get it open. And that's what allowed Barcelona to continue to circulate the ball because for the longest time, what we were lacking was exactly that, where when Barcelona had the ball, all the players would be static, just standing around in their position, waiting for the ball to come to them, instead of trying to run around, get open, or at least drag defenders away from their teammates. And that's exactly what Barcelona did this today. And as a result, Barcelona's attack worked wonderfully. Now, Lewandowski scored once again today, scoring Barcelona's second goal. And Rafinha had a great match with one assist and one goal. And I think Rafinha did a wonderful job all throughout the match of getting open and thanks to Sergio Busquets magical pass Rafinha was able to score Barcelona's third goal. Now I'm starting to see this good connection starting to develop between Busquets and Rafinha where Rafinha seems to understand how to position himself in order to get those passes from Busquets and where Busquets has been able to read Rafinha pretty well to get him the ball and not only did we see that in Barcelona's goal but we saw it in a different pass where, where Busquets gave it to Rafinha in the box leaving him right in front of goal but unfortunately Rafinha could not control the ball and missed out on that opportunity. Now Real Betis did lose a player at the 35th minute after Edgar Gonzalez received his second yellow card which I think it was unfair because I think Edgar Gonzalez's first yellow was not deserving the second one definitely was but nonetheless I don't want anyone to say that the reason why Barcelona were dominant was because Real Betis were missing a player because up to that 35th minute Barcelona were also very dominating they were circulating the ball they were creating chances and in fact Barcelona's first goal came before Edgar Gonzalez's expulsion. Now during the second half we saw the return of Osman Dembele from his injury after being out for three months and once again, the French attacker showed us that there's definitely no one on the squad that is as dangerous as him when it comes to 1v1. Now, another great moment for Barcelona was the debut of Lamine Yamal, who at 15 years old has become the youngest player to debut in the history of Barcelona. And he's also the youngest player to debut in La Liga in the 21st century. Now, even though Lamine Yamal only played 10 minutes, I think he gave us plenty to talk about because this kid is absolutely fearless. As soon as he came on, he was trying to dribble. He almost scored a goal. He 
provided an assist that almost ended up in goal. And I think not only were his touches really technical and really skilled, but the fact that he was trying to do everything shows how fearless this kid is because you can only imagine what's like being 15 years old. It's your debut with the first squad playing at the Spotify camp now for the first time against much older, much more experienced players. And yet he was still trying to do everything like he was still playing with the Juvenil A. And I'm very, very excited to see what Lamin Yamal has in store for his future because he is the crown jewel of La Masia. And many of his coaches have said that they haven't seen quite talent like that ever since Lionel Messi. Now another great moment during the match was when Real Betis' Joaquin came onto the field and the entire Spotify camp now came together to give him a standing ovation because Joaquin has announced that this will be his last season as he is retiring from football and it was really nice to see the Spotify camp now recognize this legend of Spanish football. And after all, that's exactly what sports are all about. It's about uniting us all together, no matter what jersey we are wearing. Now, unfortunately, Joaquin did feel some discomfort in his knee and he had to abandon the field. And that happened after Real Betis had used all of their substitutions. So they ended up playing the final 10 minutes with nine players. Now, overall, it was a great performance by Barcelona and definitely a redemption from the horrible performances that we saw against Rayo Vallecano, Girona and Getafe. And hopefully Barcelona can maintain this level of play or at least build upon it and improve it. That way we can finalize this La Liga season and wrap up the title as soon as possible. Now Barcelona are now still sitting at the top of La Liga table with 79 points, 11 points ahead of Real Madrid. And Barcelona's next match will be on Tuesday against Osasuna followed by another match on Sunday, an away match against Espanyol. Now on to the news that Barcelona are feeling a lot of optimism in regards to the viability or feasibility plan that they have presented to La Liga and about their chances about signing Lionel Messi. Now as I reported previously, Barcelona have presented to the Spanish league a feasibility plan where they commit to increasing their revenues and reducing their wage bill by offloading players this summer, 100 million euros worth of player sales, and also reducing the salaries of their highest earners. And in return, if La Liga approves this, this feasibility plan, it would give Barcelona more margin this summer, not only to sign players, but also to sign Lionel Messi. Now reports are stating that the internal feeling of the club is that they're feeling a lot of positiv pos positivism about this plan and that they think that La Liga will be approving it as Barcelona await an answer from the Spanish league that they expect will come at the beginning of May. Now Barcelona are also feeling a lot of optimism about the possibility of signing Lionel Messi because reporters in Argentina are reporting that Lionel Messi has seen the first draft of the contract that Barcelona are willing to offer him and it seems that Messi is okay with that contract and these reporters are also adding that Messi does not care what kind of contract Barcelona will offer him. He doesn't care about what kind of salary or bonuses. That all he wants is to return in Barcelona and that he will be okay with whatever contract Track Barcelona throw his way. So this is definitely great news for Barcelona and hopefully we'll see the Spanish league approve the feasibility plan which will allow Barcelona to sign several players and of course sign Lionel Messi. Now if this feasibility plan is approved Barcelona's number one priority will be to register the contracts of Gavi, Ronald Araujo, Sergi Roberto and Marcos Alonso and also to finalize the contract renewal of Alejandro Valde and then they will look to sign players starting with finalizing the signing of Inigo Martinez where the agreement has been completely agreed to and also most likely Ilkay Gundogan followed by Lionel Messi. Now another priority for Barcelona will be to renew the contract of Osman Dembele which expires in the summer of 2024 and it's reported that Barcelona have began official talks with Dembele's agent Musa Sissoko. Now Dembele currently has a 50 million euro release clause which if a club does pay that release clause, 25 million would go to Dembélé and 25 go to Barcelona. So Barcelona definitely need to extend the contract of the French attacker as 50 million euros is not a lot in any club if they decide to could end up taking Dembélé away from Barcelona. Now it's Barcelona's understanding that Dembélé is very happy at the team and he wants to extend his relationship with Barcelona. The club also want to extend the 
relationship with the player as Xabi counts on Dembele and considers him a fundamental piece of his squad. And now after talks have began with Musa Sissoko, it seems that Dembele's agent has also, under also understands the situation and understands now that the best place for Osman Dembele is FC Barcelona. Now Barcelona's initial objective or main objective will be to extend Bar Dembele's contract by two to three more seasons. But of course, with Musa Sissoko, no one ever knows. So we are going to have to wait and see what kind of contract renewal Barcelona will be able to negotiate. Now, speaking of attackers, it's reported that the operation to sign Vitor Roque is currently on hold as Barcelona are not quite sure whether to sign the Brazilian star. Now, as I reported previously, Vitor Roque's father visited the Barcelona offices where he informed the club that Vitor Roque wants to come to Barcelona, but that Barcelona needed to personally travel to Brazil in order to negotiate with Atletico Paranaense. Now, Barcelona currently cannot afford the 45 to 50 million euros that Atletico Paranaense are asking for. However, it's reported that the Brazilian club are willing to agree to payment plans, which would make it easier for Barcelona to sign Vito Roque. Now, it's reported that the operation is currently on hold and pending that trip from of Barcelona to Brazil because it seems that the club are not quite sure whether to go all out and sign the Brazilian star. Now, the reason for this is that there's, there seems to be disagreement with uh, internal disagreement within the club about whether they need to go all out for Vito Roque and spend that money and make that investment because Barcelona not only are considering other options for the center forward position, but they're also considering other positions to reinforce because after all, they're realizing that perhaps the center forward position should not be their number one priority. So Barcelona have put this operation on hold for now as they decide whether to go all out for Vitor Roque or not. But unfortunately, it is reported in Brazil that the player is starting to get tired to wait for Barcelona. So we are going to have to wait and see whether Barcelona will eventually decide to sign Vitor Roque and whether Vitor Roque will wait for the Blaurana club. Now, as I reported previously, Barcelona are considering sending Pablo Torre on loan this upcoming summer. And there is now reports saying that Barcelona could even consider it exchanging Pablo Torre for a different player. So in other words, offloading him permanently. Now, Pablo Torres signed for Barcelona as a Barca Athletic player with the idea that he would train and play some matches with the first team. But unfortunately, he hasn't been getting much playing time because Barcelona are not happy with his discipline or attitude as he has refused on numerous times to play with Barca Athletic. And there's also rumors about the player liking to party and staying out late even though Xavi Hernandez did deny those rumors in the news before the Real Betis match. Now, given Pablo Torres' lack of discipline and lack of playing time, Barcelona don't want him to sit on the bench for another season next season. So instead, they want to send him on loan, and that way he can continue playing and development, given that he is 19 years old, so he is at a critical stage of his career where he needs to play in order to keep growing and keep developing. Well, it's now being reported that Barcelona are also considering offloading Pablo Torre and using him in some kind of exchange or swap deal for another player. And one, player, and one of these players could be someone for the right back position. Now, it seems that Barcelona are now considering the right back position as a top priority after there was a lot of talks that Barcelona might not sign anyone for the right back position because the club have noticed that Barcelona are very much lacking in that position where they have Alejandro Valle on the left back, who's probably one of the best left backs in the, in the world. And yet on the right back position, there's no one to fill that position. And they've had to use both Kunde and Araujo to fill in for that position with Sergio Roberto also rotating as a right back. Now, as a result, Barcelona are now considering that the right back position should be a priority for the club with several names on the table, with of course, Juan Foyth being Xabi's favorite option to fill that position but other names are being considered such as Arnau Martinez and even Joao Cancelo. Now speaking of Lionel Messi's the Royal Spanish Football Federation president Luis Rubiales has made it very clear that he would love to have Lionel Messi back in La Liga this upcoming season. Now Luis Rubiales said if he returns to La Liga he will be received with open arms. I was lucky to play against Leo Messi, but I don't know if it's good luck or bad luck because I had to mark him and he is a unique, spectacular, fantastic player, but I won't get involved in his possible return either. In the end, all Spaniards and also Spanish football fans from outside the country want the best players to be in our league. 
Whatever happens, Leo Messi is unique in world football and I will always wish him the best. Now Luis Rubiales added his name to the long and growing list of people who want to see Leo Messi back in La Liga because after all the Spanish league level has gone down considerably this past few seasons and their revenue and viewership has also decreased and now the Bundesliga has overtaken La Liga as the second highest grossing league in the world. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I would like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, bis Barça.